Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 406. On Now You Know. Thanks to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. Rocket Money is the app that you need to save more and manage your money better. I love using Rocket Money to cancel subscriptions. So Rocket Money safely and securely identifies reoccurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app with just a couple of taps. No need to worry about customer service calls. Rocket Money has helped save its customers up to $740 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. You can also use it to lower your bills. Simply by uploading a photo of your bill and tapping a few buttons, Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you from internet service to cable and phone bills. Rocket Money is the app you need to achieve financial freedom. Manage subscriptions, lower bills, make a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. Get a free trial when you sign up for Rocket Money using our link. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash now you know, or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. Thanks to Rocket Money for sponsoring this episode. So last Thursday, there was the big Tesla shareholder vote, and on Thursday, Tesla shareholders voted. Then finally, our stockholders have approved the ratification of the 100% performance-based stock option award to Elon Musk that was approved by stockholders in 2018. And Elon seemed very pumped up by the vote. Hey guys, welcome, welcome to the Tesla shareholder meeting. <laughs> and I, I just want to start off by saying, hot damn, I love you guys. <laughs> yeah. I, we have the most awesome shareholder base. I mean, it's just incredible. Any public company, it's incredible. Wow. Not just opening a new chapter for Tesla, we're, we're starting a new book. Yeah, I love this quote right here. Uh, we're not just opening a new chapter for Tesla, we're starting a new book. And you can see here from the chart that it was kind of nail biter to the last second there. On the last couple of days, the votes started really pouring in. And uh, as you can see by the blue line there, those are four votes. They went above the guaranteed win line and uh, whew, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Although it looked like they were always on top which is nice. Yes. Alex says the most important message of the vote is that Elon knows now that he has the support of 90% of retail investors and more than 73% of all shares. And that matters for him personally and for the future of Tesla. And Elon says means a lot. And then Elon said he's sending this cake to Delaware as a parting gift. And that's because Tesla is leaving Delaware. Were they ever in Delaware? <laughs> well, they were incorporated in Delaware and now they are leaving and they are moving to the state of Texas. In fact, uh, this is the Texas Secretary of State, Jane Nelson, signing Tesla's incorporation papers. She says, welcome to Texas, Tesla. I'm proud to sign the papers, bringing the company's incorporation to the Lone Star State. And Elon says, awesome. So does she do that for all incorporated uh, companies? <laughs> does she stand in front of the flag? <laughs> Bob's car wash. <laughs> so at Tesla's shareholder meeting, Elon talked about Tesla's full self-driving and robo-taxis. Now we're going to deep dive on that some more on this week's Investor Club bonus stories over on Patreon. So make sure you join us for that at patreon.com slash now you know. And that was amazing enough. But then Elon shifted to Optimus and he said this. How many super useful humanoid helper droids do you want? Like, who doesn't want a C-3PO, you know, but a C-3PO plus R2-D2 plus, you know, plus plus. It would be pretty awesome. Uh, I, think, I think everyone in the world is going to want one. Like, literally everyone. Um, and, and then there will be, obviously, uh, uh, robots in industry um, making stuff. And so, I mean, I, I think the ratio of humanoid robots to humans will, will probably be at least two to one, something like that. One to one for sure, so, which means like somewhere on the order of 10 billion uh, humanoid robots, maybe, maybe 20 or 30. And if you're wondering how much an Optimus would cost... I think we could make one for a cost of maybe, at, at, 
at really high scale of about $10,000. It's, it's, it's smaller, it's, it'll be less expensive than a car. And, and I think if you sold it for, sell it for $20,000 or something, this is at large scale volume, Tesla would basically make about a trillion dollars of profit a year from that. Wait, so let me just make sure that everyone understands that. Elon is predicting that there will be, say, 10 billion humanoid robots. And even if Tesla only has a 10% market share and can make a robot for 10,000 and sell one for 20,000, Tesla could make a trillion dollars per year in profit just from Optimus alone. Yeah. He said profit. And we'll also be discussing the ramifications for this to Tesla's stock on Investor Club Bonus Story. So you need to join us this week. And Elon tweeted, bots will be offered both as rentals as well as to buy, but the former first. So you oh, rent so they're going to rent it first. Hmm. We'll rent to start. Put me in line for a few. All right. Now, at the Tesla shareholder meeting, Elon also teased some new Tesla products, saying this. So, obviously, we've got some new, new products that we're working on under the covers. Uh, <laughs> I think this is going to be pretty special. And, and, you know, some of them... I, I think people at maybe at first may think, oh, it's not going to be that amazing, but just wait. It will be. So. Okay. So one of them has to be the robo taxi. Yeah, definitely. One of the things under there is one of those. And, and now is that also the model two sub $25,000 car? I mean, or is that two of those items? Or is one of those the roadster? Yeah, I think you might be right. I think one of them must be the roadster. One must be the robo taxi. And but they then, use the same image. I know that's you know? weird, but you'd think that one would have a like sleeker. a sexier. It's not like we don't know that it's coming out. Yeah. But what then what is that vehicle on the bottom row on the left? It looks like some kind of van. Or is that the the robo taxi. Yeah, I, I don't know. Let us know down in the comments what you think. And also, while you're down in the comments, hit the like button because that's what helps share the show with more people. We need more people to know what's going on with Tesla. So for the longest time, Tesla was losing money on its service departments. Makes sense, right? I mean, to get the service stations leased and outfitted with equipment across the country, the staffing, the training, the specialized tools, the making of parts just for service, and all the warehousing and logistics of shipping parts to the service centers, it was basically losing money for years. And I mean, more than 50 years. But now Tesla is gross profitable in their services and other financial line item because the fleet has grown big enough to make service profitable. And we're going to be discussing this more on Investor Club Bonus Story, so don't miss that on Patreon. Now, is it really the fixing of the of the things or is it the wraps? Because wraps <laughs> are really, really profitable. It's possible, yeah. And then we learned some more at the shareholder meeting about miles between interventions. Uh, we also no, are no longer compute constrained uh, for training. I, I check in with the team. It's like, is there anything we could do to improve the pace of progress with respect to training and inference? Currently, that is not the limiting factor. In fact, the, the limiting factor right now is that the, the, the amount of miles between interventions is uh, so long that it takes quite a while to figure out which version is better than the other version because none of them are requiring any inter interventions. <laughs> so it's like, you know, if you start getting to like thousands of miles between interventions or you're like 10,000 miles to get an intervention, then like, well, the average person only drives about 10,000 miles in a year. So this is where actually having a giant fleet is extremely important because we can deploy a new FSD model and run it in shadow mode and see, what, see how well it performs. You know, compare the, how the human drives the car versus the, the new self-driving build and, and then analyze that delta in shadow mode, like the shadow knows, and then be able to assess uh, by getting billions of miles very quickly with the giant fleet. Like that basically, that, that data engine is incredibly helpful. Like I, I actually, it's not possible to solve the self-driving problem without having millions of vehicles on the road. So that's actually the, is, is like figuring out clever ways to test how good the next build, FSD build is, is, is actually the limiting factor right now. Uh, and then of course, we, like I said, we're, we are building another training data center right here, uh, which will be dedicated to hardware for training. So we'll, we'll, we'll bifurcate Hardware 3 and Hardware 4 training later this year. We'll, we'll keep improving Hardware 3, but we're, we're going to uncork the full capability of Hardware 4 as well. Also, later in the meeting, Elon said that they are close to eliminating all static object collisions. So I would assume that that would mean medians, curbs, oh, like telephone, telephone poles, poles, yeah, anything that doesn't move. So Elon said on Thursday, there are now two Optimus robots working in the Fremont factory doing this task. 
So they're taking cells at the end of the line and placing them into a shipping container. Yeah, Elon said that they'll have one major hardware revision that should be happening by the end of this year or early next year. And then Tesla will start limited production of Optimus. So this is where we will be setting our time machines to send us back to stop the beginning of the machine uprising. I'm dialing in June of 2024. That's when it began. Now, to be clear, this won't be for sale to the public. These Optimi will be used uh, for working in Tesla factories to test them and pilot them at different tasks. Elon predicts that next year they will have over a thousand and maybe even a few thousand Optimus robots working at Tesla. Again, we're gonna be discussing this further on this week's Investor Club bonus story, so please join us. Then Elon talked about battery costs. Now, with respect to our own cell production, we, we do see a path to cost parity by the end of this year. Very difficult path to cost parity. Currently, our 46 Aders are, uh, cost more than our suppliers. Now, they, they cost more than the suppliers today, but they cost less than the suppliers a year ago. So, you know, like th there's a bit of a feast famine thing with, with battery cell supply. It's kind of like for DRAM chips, you know, like the DRAM industry goes from like, you know, oversupply to undersupply, the, the price of DRAM changes like crazy. Um, it's kind of like that for cells. But we, we expect to achieve cost, cost parity with even the, the much lower uh, supplier cell price uh, today uh, by the end of the year. So as Elon pointed out, because there was such a huge demand for battery cells for EVs a few years ago, the price of everything that goes into a battery went up dramatically, and then the price of cells doubled. Like, for instance, the price of lithium went up like 500 percent. But now that many EV manufacturers like Ford and GM are announcing that they're cutting back on the production of EVs, battery cell prices have now dropped a lot. And so Tesla's own battery production of like the 4680s is actually more expensive than the ones that they buy from suppliers like Cattle and LG Chem and Panasonic. But from what Elon is saying, it sounds like Tesla is getting their battery prices to come down as well. And so Tesla's batteries should be on cost parity with their suppliers by the end of this year. And then this question to Elon from a Tesla shareholder. Donald Trump has been a big critic of electric vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> but last week, he surprised us by saying he's a big fan of Tesla and a big fan of you. Yeah. What did you tell him? Well, uh, you know, I can be persuasive. Um, so... Yeah, um, actually, I'm, I, I don't exactly know why he, he, this is a good question. I mean, you know, I have had some conversations with him and he does, he does call me out of the blue for no reason. I don't know why, but he does. And it's, and it's like, he's very nice when he calls and, uh, you know, and I was like, you know, you know, electric cars I think are pretty good for the future. America's the leader in electric cars, you know, you know, buy America and stuff. And uh, um, oh, and I think he actually a lot of his friends now have Teslas, and they they will love it. And he's a huge fan of the Cybertruck, um, so I think those may be contributing factors. You know? so. Well, I guess it's because Elon's pretty persuasive. So the Tesla Model Y has won Auto Trader's 2024 Car of the Year award, beating out the second place Kia EV6 and the third place Nissan Aria. Auto Trader says, we've celebrated value, comfort, and fun. However, while the 2024 awards have seen some worthy category winners, there can only be one overall new car of the year. This year, the car voted for by owners is the Tesla Model Y. In the 2024 Auto Trader Index, the Model Y received four out of five points in most of the categories evaluated, including safety, interior, and features. The vehicle earned five out of five in running costs and performance, while the Model Y's reliability was rated three out of five, which is kind of weird. Uh, Auto Trader says that more than 200,000 vehicle owners in the UK cast votes on which new automobiles were best. Oh, okay. I was wondering why the Model Y was considered new. So this is a UK-based website. Right. Yeah. So the Model Y only started selling in the UK in March of 2022, and that had pretty limited numbers in that year. In 2023, Tesla sold about 35,000 Model Ys in the UK. So I still don't know why they're calling it a new vehicle, but it's, it's new to them. New to them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going back to the three out of five for reliability, what's I think that about? That, I think that it's, you know, back in the old days, reliability, if something went wrong with your car, you wouldn't be able to drive it or mm -hmm. it would be 
not good to drive it because we, you know, go, you know, that's how the olden days were. <laughs> okay. Um, today, reliability is just like, oh, there's like a scratch on my car. I got the car and there was a scratch on it. I think a bird may have flown over my car. That, I think that's what we're considering reliability. These gotcha. Days. <laughs> All right, time for the Cybertruck Roundup. Yeehaw! The Cybertruck Roundup. So Elon told Tesla shareholders last Thursday that Tesla is now making the impossible possible with Cybertruck. They just shipped over 1,300 in one week. Elon says he thinks it's Tesla's best product, and people have different opinions on Cybertruck. And then Elon said this. Yeah, people sometimes have, like, different opinions on the Cybertruck. But if you really want to know if there's a if something is is cool if it's if it's a great product like show it to a kid okay <laughs> like no filter okay the kids got like no filter like a 5 year old 6 year old something like that and or th even 3 year old and say which car do you like <laughs> cybertruck <laughs> that's how you know um, and um, it, it's finally something that it it just looks like the future it's um, and it drives so well. Uh, it's, it, it, you know, it's comfortable. It's, it's just a fantastic product. I think it's um, our. I think it's our best product. And then I love when he just kind of got into the product and he said this. And if you think of, if you think about it, like how how often do companies make products that move your heart, that are really special? It's it's so rare, and I think this is one of them. So yeah. I think it's true. Mm -hmm. I think kids go, yeah, Cybertruck. Well, and it's not just kids. I mean, people will stop me all the time. They'll just be like, what is it? And it's great because it's like, how do you not know what this is? Like, I'm sorry. Like, like I'll tell you what it is and we'll go take a look at it. But like, how do you not know? Are you not worried that like something like this could be driving around on your streets and you have no idea what it is? Wait a minute. You. It is weird. It's weird. Yeah. Now, we've been reading on Cybertruck Owners Club that some Cybertruck owners have been having problems with failing windshield wiper motors. And we're hearing that some new owners are having their Cybertruck deliveries delayed about a week for a new wiper motor to be installed. Now, I should say that we've had our Cybertruck for about a month and a half and we haven't had any problems with the Cyber Wiper, but we'll keep you posted. And in fact, we just posted our Cyber Wiper video. Oh, yeah. So if you do want to check that out, that was on In Depth last week. And hopefully this was just like a bad batch of wiper motors that could happen to any company and hopefully they'll replace them and we'll move on. Now, if you're wondering when the cheaper non-Foundation Series Cybertruck will become available. My question was... Uh... In regards to the Foundation Series, do you guys have a certain number that you are planning on making or a timeline of when the non-Foundation Series are going to come out? Uh, yeah, we'll start making the, we'll, we'll, we'll end the Foundation Series actually pretty soon um, and uh, the non-Foundation Series uh, sometime next quarter. Yeah. yeah, from what we're hearing, Tesla will end Foundation Series Cybertruck production on June 30th. Okay, so that would mean that sometime before the end of September, the non-Foundation Series Cybertruck will become available because September 30th is the last day of Q3. I mean, I would say even sooner. My guess is that if the Foundation Series production does, in fact, end on June 30th, then Tesla will probably open up regular Cybertruck production on July 1st. So that would move the starting price of the dual motor variant below $80,000, I believe, making it available for the $7,500 U.S. federal tax credit so potentially sub $73,000 for a Cybertruck. Yeah, I mean, that could be cheaper than a Rivian or the Ford. Wow. And that's for the Cybertruck that I've been testing out. <laughs> that is huge. And then uh, Zach Bryan, the country star, he said, I have to buy a Cybertruck, dude. Elon, I thought these were going to be the worst. What this? Watch it. Sure? Yeah, why not? Oh! 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 And Elon said, Cybertruck is an APC from the future. I just love hearing from people who admit that they thought one thing and then when they actually experience the vehicle, now feel differently. Yeah. I do like green eggs and ham. I do like green eggs and ham. I do. I do, Sam, I am. We were in a parking lot the other day and uh, you were already in the Cybertruck and I was walking up to it. So this guy came up to me thinking I had nothing to do with the truck. And he goes like, not as bad looking as I thought. <laughs> And I'm like, right, yeah. 
Uh, the Dubai police don't think it looks that bad either. They said that they have added the Cybertruck, the modern electric car with a futuristic design, to its tourist police luxury patrol fleet. They have, they have tourist, tourist police? police. <laughs> you! Your handbag is not Gucci! <laughs> and Elon, of course, said, cool. And then Cybertruck owner the Megawatts on Instagram showed this. Uh, Cybertruck was involved in a sideswipe collision with the Ford Mustang. The Mustang's side mirror was damaged in the collision. Was the Cybertruck damaged? Apparently not. So I guess that's one of the benefits of having a wrap. Although you could just buff out those scratches because there was no... Or skip the wrap. Yeah. Or just <laughs> leave that, uh, you know, little paint splotch from the Mustang as a, as yeah. a badge of honor. As a warning. Yeah. And we want to thank the Cybertruck Owners Club for sponsoring the show. If you want to learn all this and more about Cybertruck, head on over there. They have their crowdsource reservation tracker and their delivery tracker so you know when you're going to be getting your truck. So there was this question at the Tesla shareholder meeting from a shareholder. My question is basically um, for FSD transfer, I think that should be something that should be ongoing. I think not only on the benefit of you for getting more people on the fleet and getting you know statistics and info, but also as Tesla owners, it makes us want to get the next model and transfer over. You know, for instance, the thing that's been holding me back is wanting to wait for the FST transfer again. So is there a reason why you haven't implemented that for like ongoing time? It, it is pretty complex for us to, to do this. It sort of uh, adds a fair bit of complexity to the, the, the sales process. Yeah, and it is tough because we've got to earn revenue somehow. You know, transfer is, is, is tough. Uh, <laughs> but we, we, sorry, one more quarter. Okay, one more quarter. Uh, <laughs> all right, you got it. One more quarter. So there you have it. One more quarter to transfer full self-driving from your current Tesla to a new Tesla purchase. Seems like we've heard this before. Yeah, I mean this has happened quite a few times, which is where we're kind of getting into the boy who cried wolf, um, or the boy who cried. Only one last quarter for you to transfer full self-driving. But this shareholder really does have a good point. Mm -hmm. There is a certain segment of Tesla owners that could be buying a new car every two years, and the lack of full self-driving transfer will slow them down. Oh, I see. Right. So Tesla's kind of missing out on those people that would just keep buying more and more cars if they could transfer it. And, you know, that's a really good point because their old car could then be sold again with full self-driving. So there's actually no real loss to Tesla. Elon makes it sound like, oh, you'd be getting FSD free for your whole life. Yeah, but then all of those used EVs would be great, right? Because more used EVs on the road help speed up the transition to EVs. Plus, those owners who are loving full self-driving are going to tell all their friends. And I mean, that's the only way really most people are going to learn about this. So I think Elon should reconsider. I just feel like, especially, look, I know I'm, I'm speaking kind of biasly here, but as a Model X owner that never can have full self-driving, even though I paid for it, even though I paid for it, I will never be able to transfer that car and get a car with full self-driving unless I do it during this next quarter. And I feel like that's not fair because I love Sparky and I want to hold on to it for a lot longer. But I don't know. Well, and the thing is, full self-driving is not here yet. It's still not done. It's kind of beta, right? It's not what they said full self-driving was going right. to be, and that's fine. I'm They're making great progress. It's just that until the car can drive itself to the point where you know, whatever level we're going to determine this is at, um, where I could like read a book or fall asleep or, you know, yeah, just fall asleep and arrive at my destination, then it's not really full self-driving. And it's sort of like I paid for the beta version of the software and I didn't really get, it's like you paid for the demo of a game. Right. And it's like, well, I didn't, you know, you're, you should give me the game even though I switch computers because it's taken so long. And kind of like your analogy here, we're kind of like those Steam customers who helped a company get off the ground, you know, software company as early, you know, alpha buyers. And then now we're kind of being... Right, it's like early access. You have to treat those customers with some respect exactly. because they did support your software from the very early days of right. its inception. But once it is full self-driving then yeah, I could see how you'd say, well, you have full self-driving, right. the car that you bought it with has it. But since we're not at that point yet, I just think that this this guy does have a point. It's like, you know, is somebody going to ante up another $8,000 to get full self-driving, even though their previous car should have had it, didn't really have it. And it's just not a great interaction to have with Tesla. Well, and they might've paid 
15 or 12,000 for it. <laughs> it's very true. Hey, if you want to share a clip you've seen on the show, but you don't want to share the whole show, head on over to our Now You Know Clips channel or X, where we chop these into little bite-sized, easy-to-share pieces. So there is a monster inside Giga Texas. I don't see a monster anywhere. Well, there was a monster. Now it's gone. Oh, wait, I have proof. You want to see? Sure. As The Boring Company posted, full time lapse of Proof Rock 3 retrieval onto the monster inside Giga Texas. So what? that is Proof Rock 3 having dug and built the tunnel from Tesla's transport prep area across the highway from Giga Texas. It's arriving inside Giga Texas. Wait, is it going on top of a big spot? robot well it that's the monster that's what they call it um it's being packed up and then driven away for its next job an awesome video by joe tegmeyer if you want to learn more the tunnel should be online in july and so now no longer will the trucks have to leave the factory drive outside on the roads to get to the prep area which would be dusty now you get to drive through a nice clean tunnel right to the prep area that's really cool such a neat design that you have this sandworm emerge from underground. And this is an innovation. They used to end up just on a big pile of dirt and then be picked up by a crane. But once you're inside a building, you can't do that. So this is an innovation they had to come up with to do this kind of thing. That's really cool. Yeah. So now you can have tunnels inside of buildings. Mm -hmm. It's kind of where you want tunnels. Exactly. A lot of the I time. mean, a lot of time that's what they're going to be doing like in Las Vegas, right? Coming up inside a hotel. Because if they didn't do this, then you'd end up in the Mike Mulligan situation and you'd have to turn into a vending machine or something. <laughs> So GM CFO Paul Jacobson said that GM now expects to sell about 200,000 EVs this year, down from a possible 300,000 EVs. Wait, 200,000? Uh, do you know how many EVs GM sold in the first quarter? Um, well, it, it probably should have been in the 75,000 uh, range. It should have been to meet that number, but yeah. they only sold 16,425 units. And now they just announced in May that they only sold 9,500 units. So I highly doubt that GM will be selling anything close to 200,000 EVs this year. They would be lucky, in my opinion, to sell 100,000. And Elon seems to agree with you. He said it's tough sledding out there. I wonder why it's so tough. <laughs> and Elon has dropped his lawsuit against OpenAI and Sam Altman. He said more on this later. Hmm. I think it was a pretty weak case from what I'm hearing legally. And so maybe there, I think this was mainly just a get a little bit of publicity kind of thing. And then he knew that it was going to be dismissed. Interesting. All right, it's time for some SpaceX news. And we're so happy to have our good friend Eli Starman back for his Starman report. Welcome back to the Starman report. I'm Eli Burton, your host. And I've got to say, it is so good to be back. For a little context for those of you who didn't know or weren't following along with the news on Twitter, back in August 2021, my mom was diagnosed with late stage, stage four ovarian cancer. They did an emergency surgery, but unfortunately the cancer had already metastasized throughout her body and it only bought her a few more months to live. She died in January of 2022 and in his grief, a few months later, my dad took his own life. Needless to say, I went through a lot in 2022, and it's taken me the last couple years to recover. And that's why for a couple years now, you guys haven't heard much from me. There hasn't been Starman reports. I just wasn't in a place mentally to be able to focus and do these weekly episodes. But the good news is I'm doing well now, and I'm ready to get back on with the show. So this week in Rocket News, we had some unexpected excitement with a Falcon 9. These days, the reliability and frequency of Falcon 9 launches is so high that it's almost becoming common. And that's what makes what happened this week so remarkable. But this week, a Falcon 9 had a T minus one second auto abort. The reason is still unknown, but nonetheless, it was an impressive demonstration of SpaceX's automated software where the rocket can make a last second decision to stop a launch to prevent a disaster. Check out this clip of the final countdown and the last second auto abort. Three, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Abort. Have abort. Man, that was cool to see. Like the boosters were igniting and it was able to still back out and pull the plug on the launch, keeping the rocket safely on the ground. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Starman Report. And I look forward to having you back for more of the most exciting news in space. Eli, we're sending you big virtual hugs, dude. 
Eli was instrumental in making the Cybertruck After Party, the delivery live stream event that we attended back in November. Um, without him, it would not have been possible. That's right. Thank so. you so much, Eli. And check out what Eli has been working on. Check this out. Yeah, so you can go to shadowsovermars.com to get your Adventures of Starman Shadows Over Mars today. You can pre-order it because it's coming out soon. So we're going to add that to our Starman collection. And you know what? What? I think it's time to put those back on the set. Oh, yeah. Starman! Starman! That's awesome. All right. Great to have it back on set. So Eric Berger posted, if there's any hope at all for Artemis 3 to happen in 2026, now that is the mission to the moon, Starship needs to fly this challenging mission in the next nine months. Elon says, I think we can do it. Progress is accelerating. Starship offers a path to far greater payload to the moon than is currently anticipated in the Artemis program. A permanently crewed moon base is possible. And Elon said, Starlink now available in 100 countries. Japan's Self-Defense Force has started testing Starlinks on two of their vessels. They say that their goal is to install Starlink on about 90% of their surface vessels within three years. And if you live in these 27 states, you may be eligible for a $200 Starlink discount. Yeah, lots of details, so we'll let you check it out for yourselves. But suffice it to say, if you've been waiting to get the new V4 Starlink dish, but the $599 price tag was a bit too steep for your budget, this may be a welcome price drop, especially since if you get your Starlink from Starlink's website or Best Buy or Home Depot, you may get an additional $100 off. So we're talking... Two ninety nine. Yeah, possibly if you qualify. Wow. But then get this. We're going to tell you more about Starlink's latest product, Starlink Mini, on this week's Disruptive Investing. So go check out that video after you finish watching TTN. And then Dima says, Mechazilla catching Starship. Elon says, aiming to try this in late July. Oh, That's what an exciting July. Soon. So last time we saw the Booster Heavy, um, you know, kind of splash down in the ocean, it landed in the ocean, which isn't like a great spot to land um then that was mainly for safety so in the ocean it's not going to like hit anybody um but what they're going to do this time is have it come down and land in mechazilla is going to catch it well and did you hear how it's going to land it's going to come down off the coast over the water and then move slowly over to the mechazilla what? yeah yeah insane over on x elon is playing his video and testing out spaces and he's talking for 45 minutes about all sorts of space stuff i highly recommend you go check that out because uh, he's kind of openly talking about all these kind of things he wants to do. All right, speaking of Into the Future, it is time for Into the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. If you want an amazing razor and you want to get 100 blades for free, that would be 200 shaves with a perfectly pristine, fresh razor blade on the nicest razor that you can buy with money. You can head over to HensonShaving.com, use our code now you know when you check out with those 100 blades in your cart, and you will get those blades for free. Step into the future. All right, so let's talk about future. Here's Elon talking about AI. Tesla's also the, world, the, the leader in real-world AI. There's really, um, this is a big deal. Like Tesla is ahead of, of Google, you know, OpenAI, anyone on real-world software actually look, taking in video and making decisions based on video. No one can, no one is even close. And it's getting better, I say, with each passing month, if not each passing week. So, yeah. And, and it's, it's also worth noting that Tesla is actually pretty good at chip design. So the AI inference chip that's, that was designed by Tesla that's in cars, we had um, sort of our hardware three AI inference, cars made in the, you know, over the past year have the hardware four. Um, we've just completed design on hardware five, which we're now calling AI five, because there still actually is not a, a chip from NVIDIA or from, and I have a lot of respect for NVIDIA, from any company that we would prefer to put in our car that is better than what we have in the car. So we, we, we started from scratch in chip design, just as we started from scratch in AI software, uh, and have the best real world AI software and the, and the best AI inference chip in the world from nothing. So this is you know, a big deal. And the, the capability of the, of, the, of the chips in the car is, is dramatic. Like, I mean, right now, uh, all the cars are actually training. We have hardware four run, hardware three in emul emulation mode. We'll continue to make significant progress in hardware three, but later this year, we'll actually bifurcate, continue working on hardware three, then do separate training uh, on hardware four. That'll be the, the sort of training cluster that we're building at the south side of the Gigafactory, and th that'll be dedicated hardware for video and uh, inference. You know, so the, the hardware four has cameras that have about four or five times better resolution, and depending on how you count the sort of hardware four, it's it's about anywhere from three to eight times better than 
Hardware 3. So, so, but, but everything you're seeing thus far is just Hardware 3, and we still have a long way to go before we, get, we reach the limits of Hardware 3. So Hardware 3, I think, will, will still will do amazing things, but, but Hardware 4, I think, will probably do about five times better. Um, then Hardware 5, which comes out in about 18 months or so, is 10 times more capable than Hardware 4, a B200 class computer. So what we'll just progressively do is Im improve how many nines of reliability the car gets. And then, of course, that will go into Optimus as well. Hardware 5, AI5, which we're calling switching from Hardware 5 to AI5, will be in Optimus and in, in all cars in, in about 18 months. And it's really just a, a staggering amount of compute. And it's very, it's very power efficient compute. So it's, it's got to be, because if you're in a mobile application like a humanoid robot or a car, you, you can't just be sucking down 10 kilowatts, you know, like you can in a data center. So you, you've got to be very power efficient. Hardware three and four are only a few hundred watts. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is hard. <laughs> and I mean, he says Tesla is no longer compute restrained. Hardware five, just to recap here, will be 50x what we are currently using with Hardware 3, and that should come out in 18 months. And then Elon said this about their inference compute. Now, Hardware 5 will we'll be able to go probably up to about seven or 800 watts, it, but it'll, it'll power fluctuate um, contingent upon the complexity of the scene that it is, that it is in. So if it is in a you know, parking lot station area, it's like, you know, you know, don't have to think very much, just like a person. Like if you're in a complicated traffic scenario, you've got to think a lot more than if you're just cruising along, you know, on an empty road. But something that I think is potentially interesting down the road is, like at some point, the Tesla fleet, I think, will probably be, you know, over 100 million vehicles. And if each vehicle has a kilowatt of efficient inference compute, I think there's a, there's, I think there's an, an, uh, sort of an Amazon Web Services, AWS type opportunity, because if you've got 100 million vehicles with a kilowatt of efficient inference compute, you've got 100 gigawatts of compute. Like 100 gigawatts of compute is a lot, and it's distributed all over the world. So even so, when the car is not in autonomous mode, which I think probably is, you know, in, or, or, or doing robo taxi work, maybe 50, 60 hours a week. But at 100 hours a week, it's it's not it's probably stationary. So there's 100 hours of 100 gigawatts of inference compute, which I think we should use. Why not? You know, when 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 people looked at Amazon, which started out obviously as an online bookseller and it's on has grown to be like this incredible place where you can buy anything. Amazon Web Services, like, well, they got all these computers that only really see peak usage sometimes. But what are they going to do when it's not peak usage? Um, and sometimes the Amazon servers are down at like 10%. So that's when they said, well, let's do Amazon Web Services. And then Amazon Web Services became more valuable than the entire rest of Amazon. Anyway, I think there's, there's some kind of opportunity there that's pretty significant for, for Tesla down the road. You know, again, that's really, nobody's really factoring that in. But I think that, that actually will be quite significant. Yeah, so to sum up there again, 100 million vehicles with one kilowatt of efficient inference compute that equals 100 gigawatts of compute for 100 hours per week distributed around the globe. Insane. Mm -hmm. All right, it's time for going green. So Elon had this to say on Thursday about Tesla's grid storage, both the Powerwall and the Megapack. So this year, uh, we're also on track to complete a massive number of energy deployments. So that um, is a gigantic increase uh, in, in deployment uh, capability. Uh, so so okay, we're really seem, we seem to be tracking to sort of a two to 300% year over year growth in, in uh, energy storage deployment and stationary pack. So re it's giant. Um, and the, the limiting factor really is being able to build more mega packs and build more power walls. So we're ramping up production of the power wall three, which is really a game changer for uh, at, at the personal level, the Powerwall 3, it usually takes about uh, three iterations of, t of any given technology for it to be something where it's like, okay, now we're really hitting the sweet spot. So Powerwall 3 is like an epic product. The Mega Pack is also, it's, it's, I'd call it sort of iteration two of the Mega Pack is, is also an epic product. With Mega Pack 3, which is, I don't know, probably a, a couple years away, we'll, we'll start actually absorbing more and more of the substation of the sort of power electronics. So I sort of think you want to get to the point with the mega pack where you can literally just take the high voltage power lines and plug them in. Just, there's no substation. We just 
just plug them in. <laughs> just drop them down and uh, drop it down and plug it in. That, that's and now, now it works, which is like mind blowing for the utility industry, by the way. Like they're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> you just plug the wires in and it'll work for very high voltage. That I think is is actually going to be a major. So this is uh, anyway. So yeah, this is this is great. Excellent work by the energy storage team. So. So just look at that exponential growth in Tesla's energy storage deployments. That is 200 to 300% growth. Insane. Hey, so do you drive an electric vehicle? I do. And do you ever plug in that electric vehicle? Of course. Do you ever sit in that electric vehicle while you're plugged in? Yeah. Well, then you're a sitting duck. What do you mean? You can't drive away from inside your vehicle when you're plugged in in an electric car because they don't want the cords getting ripped off of buildings. Right. And this is a good thing that yeah. we don't have, you know, think of the news stories if, if cords were getting ripped off, but it also means that you are stuck if something were to approach your car. I don't want to be stuck. You don't want to be stuck. You want to be able to drive away. You yeah. want something that would allow you to break away and drive away into safety. That is what this is. This is the EVject escape connector, and it does just that. It allows you to plug your, in this case, Tesla in to a supercharger, to your home, whatever, anything that can take the Tesla plug, you can even put the adapter on it. Now, all you have to do is while you're sitting in the driver's seat, simply stop the charging and you can drive away. And this will break, leaving you zipping off to safety. But now it's broken. That, well, it hopefully has just saved you from a potentially hazardous uh, situation. Now I have to buy another one. No, you don't because the amazing team over at EVject will send you a new one for free if you use it to escape an emergency. And if you forgot about Father's Day, this is a good makeup Father's Day present. Head on over to evject.com and get yours with 50% off by using our referral code NYK when you check out. That's right. 50% off by using that code. That's NYK for now you know. All right, it's time for Sunspots. So I guess Tesla Megapack has its own X account? <laughs> I guess so. It posted 600 megawatt hours of Megapack will soon be co-located with wind at Orsted's Horsey 3 wind farm. And I believe it is located here off the eastern coast of the UK near Boston. I guess that's where Boston came from. <laughs> hey, Bostonians. Um, and it, so it looks similar. <laughs> know, like right? on the map, it's like it's got the two. That's funny. Um, so Hornsey 1 has 1.2 gigawatts of power. Hornsey 2 has 1.3 gigawatts. And Hornsey 3 will be the largest single offshore wind farm in the world with 2.8 gigawatts, enough to power 3 million UK homes. That's 200 turbines. Wow. And if you want to get battery packs and maybe some solar, but you don't really know where to begin, Talk to our friends at Energy Pal. They do this all the time. They knew all the installers, all the products, all the rebates, and they'll do all of this stuff for you for free. Tell them that Zach and Jesse sent you. Link is down below. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. Remember, we need your stories. Send them to us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. Two minutes or less, shoot them in landscape with good audio and no music. What do we got this week? Jacob sent us this story about the first version four supercharger to go live on Long Island, New York. All right, I had to do this as a quick impromptu visit. I just found out about this. So I saw on Supercharge that there is a new station coming to the Coppog Smithtown area. Um, that's where I am right now. I'm at the intersection of Wisconsin Highway, Route 347 and County Route 111 is kind of going the other way. Stop in, I, I thought it was still gonna be under construction, but we got some, we got some freaking V4s here, look at that. First time I've seen V4s in the flesh. Yeah, we got, um. oh, it does disconnect. I wonder if this works. It's not on the map. It's not on the Tesla map, but it is a magic dock. Check that out. Got a little instruction thing there. That's kind of cool. Yeah, these are chunky cables too. Ugh. Yeah, it's, uh, they still got some equipment over there. Uh, no, it's probably not working. Guess it can't hurt, but uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. First, definitely the first V4 on Long Island and uh, first or second magic dock on Long Island. Pretty cool. And this is a great spot, by the way. This is a very busy area. You've got Dunkin' Donuts, Baskin Robbins. Uh, there's a Chick-fil-A over there and the gas station with restrooms on the other side. But uh, yep, pretty cool. Love it. 
All right, I pulled over just to try it. I figured it wasn't gonna work, but it was worth a shot. Yeah, definitely, they're not turned on yet. And they're not active in the Tesla app. But the, the controller works. I was able to lock and unlock it. So something's being powered. And something else I noticed, I believe, is this a prefab location? No, I don't think so. Because I be if I'm not mistaken, the prefabs are four on a block. These, so these were just single points. Thank you, Jacob. That's awesome. Glad you tried it out. It wasn't working at the time, but I'll bet it's up and running now. That's exciting. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. We got so many stories this week. We got so many Investor Club bonus stories. So go support us over on patreon.com slash now you know. Get all of your Patreon bonus stories every week and help support what we're doing. We'll see you there. All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for the poll. How tuned in to EVs and sustainable energy news are you? Kind of a mixed bag here. It is. Yeah. I mean, most people say they try and keep up with a few articles and videos. A few even said they get all their news from us. Wow. <laughs> all right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. And Sam Altman of OpenAI says, very happy to be partnering with Apple to integrate chat GBT into their devices later this year. Think you'll really like it. Mike Ben says, give me a Grok phone with Grok integrated. And Elon says, if Apple actually integrates woke nanny AI spyware into their OS, we might need to do that. And yeah, then he went on a rant about Apple. Uh, Robert Scoble says, Apple intelligence, what do you think? Elon said, it's neither Apple nor intelligent. And Gout says, Steve Jobs would have fired the entire team. And Elon agreed. Elon says, if Apple integrates OpenAI at the OS level, then Apple devices will be banned at my companies. That is an unacceptable security violation. And visitors will have to check their Apple devices at the door where they will be stored in a Faraday cage. Holy crap. Tim Cook then said, it's personal, powerful, and private, and it's integrated into the apps you rely on every day. Introducing Apple Intelligence, our next chapter in AI. Elon says, don't want it. Either stop this creepy spyware or all Apple devices will be banned from the premises of my companies. Elon went on to say, it's patently absurd that Apple isn't smart enough to make their own AI, yet is somehow capable of ensuring that open AI will protect your security and privacy. Apple has no clue what's actually going on once they hand your data over to open AI. They're selling you down the river. And then he posted this meme. <laughs> Marquise Brownlee says this isn't a single app or Siri 2.0, but it's cooked into their software all over the place. Elon said Apple using the words protect your privacy while handing your data over to a third party AI that they don't understand and can't themselves create is not protecting your privacy at all. Then Dima says Giga Texas today. Elon said it'll be stunning all the way to the Colorado River. Elon then said here's the problem with agreeing to share your data. Nobody actually reads the terms and conditions. Doge Designer says, remember when Scarlett Johansson told OpenAI not to use her voice, but they cloned it and used it anyway? Now imagine what they can do with your phone data, even if you don't allow them to use it. And Elon said, exactly. Autism Capital says, Apple tricking you into believing your data is secure. Elon says, the truth is that handing your data over to a digital superintelligence that Apple themselves cannot even build or understand at the operating system level is insane. Doge Designer then said, Apple can't be trusted anymore. Elon said, they cannot. Doge Designer says, backdoor. Elon says 100%. Peter Diamante says, if you were introduced to Elon at a cocktail party and had 60 seconds to make a lasting impression, what would you say to him? And Elon said, are you the clone or am I? That's... <laughs> Warren Redledge says, calling it now, X will partner with Samsung to manufacture an X phone. It will look better than any of these that I just hacked together. XOS will be open source to assure user privacy is protected. This phone will be optimized for the X app, of course. Elon said, it's not out of the question. Hmm. Lips of TikTok says, another right-wing conspiracy coming true. Biden weighs move to unlock legal status for some unauthorized immigrants. And Elon said, yep. Thomas Massey, the congressman, says, Hunter might deserve to be in jail for something, but purchasing a gun is not it. There are millions of marijuana users who use guns in this country, and none of them should be in jail for purchasing or possessing a firearm against current laws. Elon says, I agree. He and others should be in jail for impugning the integrity of the United States by taking bribes for political favors, but not for this pseudo crime. Sawyer Merritt says, news. General Motors is investing $850 million into crews to help cover the company's operational costs. The automaker has lost $8.2 billion on crews since 2017, with $3.48 billion lost in 2023 alone. And Elon said they are not making the right moves to succeed. Ark Invest says, tomorrow, mark your calendars. This is because they came out with their expected value. And Elon says, I'm curious to read this. The more I think about robo-taxis and humanoid robots, the more absurd the valuation becomes. And Elon says, a teleportation time machine would be so helpful. 
S.C. E. Robinson Jr. says the New York Times posted a false story about Starlink and an Amazon tribe becoming addicted to porn. They have apologized and corrected the story, highlighting Starlink's benefits in healthcare, education, business, and communication. And Elon said it was disrespectful and unkind of the New York Times to say that about the tribe. So, wow. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how they were able to take a positive story like that and be like, well, actually, um, here's a bunch of B-roll of people actually using the internet, and they look kind of different. And uh, don't you think that those people should just be hunting like they always have? And you're like, I, I mean, maybe, but like if they want to. No, they should be forced into whatever. Whatever. Homar's catalog says, because of an error in the HD map where it was missing a hard road edge in the alleyway, the car hit a telephone pole. Good luck trying to scale this HD map up to be accurate on every street worldwide. And of course, he's talking about Waymo. And Elon said, yeah, the fundamental problem with relying on precise maps is that the world is constantly changing and even small errors can lead to terrible outcomes. Citizen Free Press says that the House holds Merrick Garland in criminal contempt. The vote was 208 to 207. Elon says an important vote. Holmar's catalog says, okay, Elon, we got you the options. Now you have to make Tesla the most valuable company on earth. Deal? And Elon said, yes. Alex Jones says Elon Musk is the greatest threat to the new world order. Elon says, I guess I better beef up security. Benjamin DeCracker says OpenAI has brought the director of the NSA to its board of directors because, of course. And Elon said, hmm, can't wait for OpenAI to have access to my phone. Farzad says Elon Musk just predicted that Tesla has the potential to reach a $30 trillion market cap. That's 10x Apple, NVIDIA, or Microsoft. Elon said, I'm not sure what money will mean at that point, but it is possible. <laughs> Deep Mark Ryan says, did I hear right? Hardware 5, 10x better than hardware 4, which is 5x better than hardware 3. What? And Elon said those are roughly accurate. Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, says Tesla shareholders approved corporation move to Texas. It was meant to be. Welcome to the Lone Star State. And Elon said, thank you, Governor Abbott. Defense Scoop says Microsoft deploys GPT-4 large language model for Pentagon use in top secret cloud. Elon says, what's the worst that could happen? I think setting the time machine to right now is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. says Puerto Rico's primary elections just experienced hundreds of voting irregularities related to electronic voting machines, according to the Associated Press. Luckily, there was a paper trail, so the problem was identified. Elon says we should eliminate electronic voting machines. The risk of being hacked by humans or AI, while small, is still too high. Elon Musk then said the new Tesla Roadster can fly. And Tesla posted, in 2023, our customers avoided releasing over 20 million metric tons of CO2 into the Earth's atmosphere by using our products. Wow. Cillian says Marine Le Pen declares that law-abiding immigrants who respect French culture can stay, but foreigners who commit crimes will get a one-way plane ticket. Do you agree with her? And Elon said yes. Elon says legalize humor. Amuse says failure. President Biden touted his massive $42 billion broadband equity plan in 2021. Since then, not a single American has been connected to the Internet under the plan. Meanwhile, Biden canceled Elon Musk's billion-dollar plan to bring Internet to one million rural locations. And Elon said, yeah. Joe Gebbia says, this is crazy. There's currently no requirement on federal voting forms to provide proof of U.S. citizenship. And Elon said, insane. Not Elon Musk says, would you install a Neuralink interface on your brain to allow you to control your new X phone by thinking? Elon said, in the future, there will be no phones, just Neuralink. All right. All right. All right, it's time for community mail time. Community mail time. Remember, share your stories, your photos, your videos with us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. What do we got this week? Richard spotted this Porsche Taycan on Delray Beach, Florida. Josh found this wrapped Cybertruck in downtown Fort Collins, Colorado. Colin sent us this picture of a Volkswagen ID3 being used as a London Fire Brigade Chief Officer vehicle in the UK. Marco spotted this gold Model X at the supercharger in The Hague, Netherlands. EB saw this black wrapped Cybertruck at the pier at Santa Barbara, California. Dan spotted this electric canal boat charging in Chester, UK. Kevin saw this roadster at the Soul Fest Music Festival in Deerfield, Wisconsin. Harry spotted this Fisker Ocean in Scotland. Graham saw the Cybertruck in Glasgow, Scotland. Rich spotted this wrapped Model Y in Bedford, Mass. Matt sent us a picture of his Model Y Long Range towing a 14-foot cargo trailer. Elaine spotted this Highland Refresh Model 3 in Lemonster, Mass. Brian saw these alternating red and gray Teslas at a supercharger in Three Rivers, Texas. And Alan spotted these two Cybertrucks at Dynamic Tint in Tempe, Arizona. Wow, back to back. And remember, if you have EV tips, by the way, send those to us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com because everyone needs more EV tips. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. Let's see what people have reviewed out there in the world. Hey, hello from Pahrump, Nevada. It's 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're at the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
8 supercharger version 2 250 kilowatt there's the SpaceX 2018 model 3 range and uh, this is a nice place because you've got the Pahrump Nugget Casino open 24-7 and Gold Town Casino and Burger King and Smith's Grocery Store, uh, Smith's Gas Station, Taco Bell, Pawn Shop, Renna Center, all right here in Pahrump, Nevada. Pahrump is a, uh, a bedroom community of Las Vegas about uh, 60 miles away from Las Vegas. It's in Nye County, so it's a different vibe. And uh, a lot of things here, very nice. 36 cents a kilowatt hour, 24-7. Uh, I give it easily and eight out of 10, now you know. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is Anton from the Netherlands. I'm here at the new supercharging station in Van Rye, in the south of Netherlands, where we have a 20 stall supercharger station where we have 11 normally placed and a little bit of an odd one just behind me I think may be handy for when you have a trailer or something behind you or a caravan um, it's a nice place um, just off the highway there is a McDonald's behind me there is a hotel so I guess I can get the coffee there. So um, I give this uh, this one for now. I think an eight out of ten. Pretty neat. I will return here. Now you know. Hi, this is Ron. We're at the version three supercharger near the Rayleigh's in Sacramento on Freeport Boulevard, just off Interstate Five. This supercharger has twelve stalls. As you can see, it's fairly full right now. There's only a minute here is really the Rayleigh's Superstore, um, which of course has restrooms and everything you ever wanted to eat. Um, based on the, I would say the lack of other facilities here, and given the fact that it is a version three and it has enough room for everybody, I would give this a seven out of 10. Now you know. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Dave again, uh, coming to you this time from Grapevine, Texas. Here at a 12 stall version three supercharger location. Opened up a while ago. I didn't see anybody doing a review on it. Um, and it is in this incredible gas station slash car wash slash restaurant there. They've got a, a convenience store on the inside. Everything you could ever want. It's really nice. I'll see if I can't add some video to this. Um, they got a stone oven pizza, a barbecue joint. I mean, this place is off the charts. Um, it's right down the street from a, a, the Gaylord Texan in Grapevine, right across the street from the Great Wolf Lodge. I mean, it is, I'm gonna have to give this a 10 out of 10, man. I, I haven't seen a nicer supercharger. So um, yeah, if you're in North Texas DFW area, looking for a good charge and a place to eat and get drinks and do whatever, wash your car, come here. It's called Texas Best something. Um, yeah, so now you know. 110 degrees. Woo! Whew. I've experienced 106 degrees, and my body just shut down. So I don't know. Wow, that's... Uh, Good for you doing a whole supercharged review in that. You were outdoors. In those conditions. Wow. Were you getting hazard pay? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, and for beautiful superchargers this week, I just thought we would show this map and talk about what Elon said at the shareholder meeting. He said, we'll deploy more superchargers this year that are actually working than the rest of the industry combined. We plan to spend about $500 million on supercharger deployments for the rest of this year. Well, see, there's a caveat in that. He said that are actually working. I think there's about 12 in the rest of the industry, and they just kind of move around yeah you know and it keeps people moving i guess all right what do we got for new superchargers this week we got a lot number 116 in japan is the four stall in tokyo number one in qatar we talked about this last week is in doha north it's a 12 stall number 45 in oregon is the 16 stall at grants pass number 86 in italy is the eight stall version four in conagliano italy number 63 in washington is the 12 stall version four in burlington Number 38 in Austria is the 6-stall version 4 in Pashing Plus City, Austria. Number 47 in Ohio is the 12-stall in Cleveland. 
Number 464 in California is the 8 stall version 4 in Sonora. The 16 stall version 4 in Villodier le Pole Rofondi, France. Wow. I think I said I think you I think nailed I it. Nailed it. <laughs> I think you're French. Ah, uh, wow. <laughs> I've, it's all my French pronunciation lessons have really paid off. The 6 stall in Nanjing, China. Number 11 in Malaysia is the 4 stall version 4 in Kuantan, Malaysia. Number 192 in France, and number 1228 in Europe is the 9-stall version 4 in Briançon, France. Number 19 in Louisiana is the 12-stall in Bossier City. Number 140 in the UK is the 12-stall in Birch, Eastbound, UK. Number 78 in Virginia and 2,288 in the United States is the 8-stall in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 3-stall in Ordos, China. The 3-stall in Zaimen, China. The 3-stall in Tianjin, China. The 3-stall in Zhangjiang, China. And the 3-stall in Guangzhou, China. And number 2,081 in China and 6,441 in the world is the sixth stall in Yanti in China. Woo! And look, everybody, voting your Tesla shares worked. We went up against the Goliaths and we won. Together, we are strong. Don't forget that. This is our community and this is where we meet every week. Thank you for watching. And if you can't get enough, remember that if you're like one of these lovely people and you support the work that we do over on Patreon, you can watch all of our Patreon bonus stories made just for you exclusively every week. We'll see you there, patrons. And thank you for being awesome. We'll see you guys next week. Now you know. know.